Hello everyone, Argzy here. Today we are taking a look at a recently released map for Farming Simulator 22. Now this map's largely flown under the radar. I did a little bit of a search for it, there doesn't seem to be too much mention of it anywhere, so uh, I thought we'd bring it to your attention. This map is called Palouse in Washington. It is a standard size map, so 2 kilometers square, 2 kilometer by 2 kilometer, and it is by Camille Mapping. You might be familiar with Camille's other work, uh, Shellbrook and Morris Manitoba, both the Farming Simulator 22, as well as several other maps that he put together for Farming Simulator 19. Now, of course, as is the case with all of Camille's maps, this will be for PC only. Uh, but I'm quite taken by it. I think it's quite a neat little map and uh, looking forward to showing it off to you. So as the name suggests, it is located in Palouse in Washington. Uh, the map's based on real DEM data. It's located just to the southwest of the town of Palouse, near the border between Washington and Idaho. Anyone familiar with the region will know that it's characterised by rolling hills and it's considered quite a major agricultural area, mainly producing wheat and legumes. Now, early on farming in the area was pretty tough work with uh, early mechanisation of farm equipment, tractors and combines struggling on the hilly terrain, they just did not have the power. So it took a wee while for things to become a little bit more mechanised uh, as equipment became a bit more powerful. So. With that all in mind and a little bit of history of the area, let's go and take a look at the map, the PDA and some of the details. So the first thing you notice taking a look here at the PDA is the size and the shape of the fields. They're all quite a decent size, uh, a number of them are over 100 acres, a few smaller ones, field 20 here in the middle and the ones over the other side here and around the town and river area and also obviously the shape. Now the shape follows a lot of the contours of the hills which you'll see as we go and start to take a look around the map. As I said, up in the top right hand corner, the River Palouse runs through and sort of dissects the map, not quite in half, but uh, separates the town from the farmland. There is three main farmyards here on the map. We've got one sitting down in here near field five, second one in here between fields one, two and four, and a third one up here, which actually also has a cow barn on it as well. The first two I looked at, they are more set up for your arable farming with uh, grain bins and things like that. We just come back up here, you can see a number of cell points in, in and around the town area as well as an animal dealer up the top and uh, we've also got the main shop here as well which we are standing in front of as a fuel fill point in it as well. number of streets and roads and we'll go and take a look around just at some of the decoration because uh, there's a little bit of detail has gone into that. It's uh, quite cool, quite nice to have that sort of separated off from where the main farming area is. I'm taking a look at some of the field prices Field 16, which is one of the small ones in there, valued at $21,664, 3.35 acres. Over here to field 12, one of the larger ones, 140 acres, $1.248 million. Field 10, 111. You see there, 130 acres. So we've got some good size and a good variety of fields. 74 acres, $540,000. So some affordable land to start off with and some more expensive land to build yourself up to if that's what you want to do. If you've been paying close attention to the colours here on the map, you'll notice that there is some additional crops. Just tab across here, we've got flax, peas and lentils, all as those additional crops here, which is, uh, ties in with the region which we mentioned earlier, is quite a big producer of the legumes, so the peas and lentils are obviously quite an appropriate crop to be having here on the map. The cow barn's been modified as well to take uh, flax bales as well as timar and grain can be used in the feed mixture, so that is a little bit of something a little bit different. It does seem to be a couple of silos up on there, whether they're fermenting silos. I haven't looked into just yet. That might be something we can go and explore and take a look at. Taking a look at the precision farming data, there is a custom soils map there. So you can see some unique sort of shapes and styles of the soil. Uh, not too much of the silty clay, which is nice. And through my reading of this region, there seems to be some good fertile topsoils. So that would match having more of the loam and sandy loams and things like that, which have a slightly better productivity on them. And following on from that and the customization, we do have a custom crop calendar here. You can see a lot of things are planted through April, May. Getting all the way down there to our peas and lentils is even green feed oats, which wasn't something that was mentioned in the description. I've only just seen that there now. Uh, so I'm not sure whether those are actually working, whether that's just added into the crop calendar because they didn't show up when we looked there on the map. It does look like we can plant wheat in September, so you can get some winter wheat in there as well. Not much overlap or anything that allows for double cropping, but that might not be something that's practiced in this area of the world. Not something I'm familiar with, but uh, certainly doesn't seem to be any opportunity there for that. 
So now that we've taken a look at the PDA, let's go and take a look at some of the map in a little bit more detail. Now we're going to start off down here in the town, go for a little bit of a drive around and check things out before we head over the river and go and take a look at the farmlands. First things first though, we are here at the store and we'll keep the mini map up in the bottom corner so you can keep yourself orientated. You can see it's a very well, uh, very well set out store and it's just great seeing all the equipment and things floating around. Just gives it a real occupied and used sense. We see a big John Deere region, it is a John Deere dealership, so uh, you can see all the John Deere combines and things like that around. And one thing I was going to mention, with the hilly terrain that you get in this area, it's well suited to side hill combines. Now unfortunately, in my research, there's very limited opportunities and options for side hill. We do have the John Deere 6600 series from the 1970s by Tired Iron Modding, which uh, I've had a little bit of a play around with and worked fantastically on the side of the hills, but uh, those large fields are going to take some time. There's also an Agco pack of side hill combines in the mod hub, so you can check out those and get a Massey Ferguson or a Fent or something like that. Little red tractor is snuck into the back corner there as well, but this is the main dealership. Uh, we'll go and grab a tractor or a vehicle to drive around in very soon and figure out exactly where those spawn. Lots of space though, lots of space and uh, like I said, very nice to see all of this decoration and equipment and that around here. A couple of triggers here, just taking a look at this one. This is one you can actually buy propane in the tank, so uh, if you wanted to have some propane there, I'm assuming then that there might be a grain dryer up on one of the farms. We'll go and check that out when we go and have a look. There is a buy point there for propane. I did think it was fuel when we first looked at it on the map, but uh, you can see there, missing a little bit of the information. But it is an empty silo and it can only put propane in it. Now if we head back on over this way, we'll go and find the shop trigger which was in front of the store. Or if any of this is openable doesn't look like it. Head back around here, we'll go and buy a pickup to go for a drive in and we'll see exactly where things spawn. So we've just purchased ourselves a pickup, head around the corner here and see where that has dropped right there in the middle of the yard. There should be a good amount of space around here for different equipment to spawn. I know that's been a complaint on several maps lately that there's not enough space for our equipment. So good to see that assuming it all spawns across in that direction, you should be able to get a good amount of equipment in here. So we're just going to jump in Around the right side, we've gone for the uh, Stealth All Black F450 by JJ Mods and Edits. We'll jump in here and go for a little drive. So just looking back in the PDA, you can see we're down here at the store. We're going to head up and take a route through the uh, residential area, through some of the town. We'll head down and take a look at some of these spots. There is another gas station, so we do have a full fuel fill point there. We'll go around and have a look at the animal dealer, take a look at these smaller uh, fields in here. Gonna take a couple of look at a couple of these cell points before heading back down this way. Now there is a train track on the map that goes through. That is the line of it there. Uh, it's not an operational train track though. You'll see some static trains and that sitting around there. So while there is a cell point attached to it, attached to a couple of them, uh, it doesn't actually sell through the train like some of the other maps do. And then once we've taken a look around the town, get on over the bridge down this way, and then there is really only the one main road up and through the map. It heads on up to all the different farmyards that so we'll take a drive up and go and check all those out. One thing to keep an eye out for as we drive around there is custom traffic. Now I haven't spotted anything in particular myself yet, uh, so we'll just keep an eye on that when we get to an area where there is traffic on it. But like I said, lots of nice decoration, use of a lot of the base game assets, to the temp and bowling lane there, and different things all around the map, lots of different houses and uh, buildings which just give it a nice occupied feel. The map edge you do get a little bit of an edge there which is nice, it doesn't just fall off completely. But we've reached the end, we'll do a little bit of a U-turn, head on back this way and uh, we'll take a right and head on up into the foothills of the town. As we head on up the hill you can see we've got some pavement, sidewalks, things like that, lots of uh, buildings and houses, and up here back into some more formed roads. Now we're just going to quickly drive along here, just because I quite liked one of the features up here. Uh, Camille's got a little construction site, a little excavation site, fire station just there on the right. But as we head on out around the corner here and up to the left, there's really no reason you'd want to come up here, but uh, it's nice to see that the effort has been put into building the map and adding these places in. It would have been easy to sort of cut this all out and just ignore it, but as we get up here, there's this cool little construction site. Bobcat and the excavator there, doing a little bit of work. Not sure what it is, putting some pipes or drainage or something in. Just nice that he's gone to the effort to decorate the map in this way. Uh, 
I know lots of people into their roleplay and things like that, so there's some chances and opportunities there that you could use the map for that. I'm already thinking ways we could uh, integrate a trip out to Washington from our uh, UMOV series, The Traveller's Tale. It'd be, uh, be an interesting little subplot to have a reason to venture up into these parts. We're going to head on back down this way, head towards those uh, silos you can see just there past the trees and uh, we'll head on down to the right in fact while we're driving this way you can see one of those fields just down in there and we're looking into the back of the animal dealer as well coming up here on the right was the gas station past these few buildings so we've got a cell point in there for the grocer's market I think it was and there is the gas station with another one of these little fields that's sort of just tucked in there in the middle of the town carrying on around the corner here Again, another one of these fields so these are pretty small ones pretty compact little fields didn't take too much work so if you did want to use some of that sort of smaller stuff the older tired iron modding side hill combines these would actually be a good one to test those out on and have a little bit of a play around with these fields but here we are this is the animal dealer looks very similar to the elm creek animal dealer lots of the same assets and buildings that have been used there uh, some static animals in as well which is nice kind of again just adds that little bit of a uh, occupied feel, cars and things like that parked around the edge of the map and at different points which is cool. We head back this way, we'll go down to the silos, take a look at that cell point, head on back along and then we'll go and check out I'm sure what everyone wants to see which is all the farmlands and all of this hilly area. You can start to see that as you look across uh, across there, start to see some of that terrain, it's pretty cool. This looks to be Palouse Grain Growers Inc. Now one thing that caught my eye as we headed around here and hadn't been mentioned or I hadn't picked up it does seem like we've got an anhydrous buy point there so I am going to assume that the map is anhydrous ready for a precision farming you might want to go and find the precision farming anhydrous setup which uh, from memory is by Collins Customs so make sure you go and find that if you wanted to use precision farming and do some anhydrous we're just going to drive across here and take a look in you can see the dump trigger there in the left hand lane we've got the way bridge Get on over this from Pelos Grain Growers Inc. Pretty simple little setup. You can see the train tracks just there in the background as well. But nice little cell point. Nice to be able to drive in and around and uh, see all of this. Now back out onto the road. Head on back down into the uh, town and go and check out the other cell points that are on our way out of town. Now I did think, looking at the map, we might have been able to head along the uh, bottom of the area, but uh, I, there is only one road through to this, which is the road we're on now, so we're certainly getting into any of these spaces, be beating a well-used track as we go in and out there. Now, I guess the next right, we'll head back down towards the store and go and check out those cell points. So just to help you with your bearings, we're heading back past the shop there, we're heading over the Palouse River now, we're heading down in both directions and we're entering a couple of different cell points I'm just going to head in this way, Pioneer brand seeds now I wonder if this does actually have any buy points for seed and fertiliser and things like that I'm not noticing any triggers, we'll go and check that door out in just a little bit I will just head around this way, see if we can find where the cell point here is and we come around here and there is going to be a dump trigger in the middle there, there is so again, top bottom trailers will be the order of the day get in there and be able to unload and sell your product. I do notice, in fact there we are, we'll come around the back here because it does look like we do have a buy point here for different products and let's have a look, no evidence of anything on there, no, we won't be able to fill up from this but uh, I'm going to safely assume that you can come down and buy some of your commodities from that point which is nice, it's good to have those on the map rather than relying on the uh, big bags and pallets and things like that that come with the game. We're back out onto the road. Looking over the road, we do have another cell point sitting up here. Again, making use of another one of the base game assets. Got the turning space in here, and you can see the train there just on the background. It's a static train. Drive up through here. While I'm not spotting a trigger, it does show a trigger on the minimap. So, ah, it is see it just down there below. It's. Uh, not that well positioned but there is a trigger there to be able to dump so you can sell your grain at that point as well which now takes us out here 
across the train tracks, starting on our way up into the main farmlands. That is the town. There's the train waiting for us patiently. Not heading anywhere quickly. Let's head on up this way. We are going to head on up through now into the farmlands, into uh, the hillier side of the map. Take a look at some of these fields. You can already get a real sense as we drive up here. It starts to turn into the valley, some of the terrain, which is uh, which is pretty cool. I like it. I like the way it rolls. And even though you are, the map boundary doesn't go too far beyond, it doesn't feel like it's uh, not there because when you're down in a spot like this, all you can see are these rolling hills in both directions. So we'll head on up here, just up here on our left is the first of the farmyards we will take a look at. Just past field 14, you can start to see the uh, blue indicator there on the mini-map, and the house as well. Now this is the main sleep trigger, as the house of the farms. So if you wanted to use one of those, that is set up on here. We'll just turn it on in and go and take a look at what is provided. Pretty simple looking yard so far, there's the house tight access into the back and really limited in what silos we have. Some silos there on the left. Pretty small silos, I'm not sure what the capacity of those is. Uh, some, what would they be? Upper bottom silos there. Maybe for your uh, supplies, putting in fertilizer, seed, that kind of thing. And then a couple of the Quonset sheds as well. So a pretty small compact little yard. Not much space for storage or anything like that. Let's go and have a look. I may need to own these if they are openable. I'm not sure if they are. Uh, what I might do, quickly buy the land. Check some of those things out. And there we go. Now that we own the land, got the trigger there for the door. Both doors independently. Open up. So you do have some storage on there. And you'll now see that now that we own the, the uh, land, we've got a whole lot more options and a whole lot more triggers. Got the large petrol tank. The storage there. Then we do have, as we see, off around the back here, a fertilizer silo in that one, fertilizer here as well, fertilizer in this one as well. Another shed, so we do have some more storage on the side as well. This one's a little bit different in that it's a drive through, so you can open up both ends. The other one only had the door on one end. And then we'll come over here and take a look at each of these silos. Are all empty obviously uh, but they are your flat bottom bins for putting your crops into so pretty tiny pretty compact but you can make some good use of all the different auger setups that are available just taking a look across there you can start to really see the nature of the fields the rolling nature of all this farmland right that's enough of that farm let's jump back in the pickup head on across the road and uh, we'll go up past the barn that you can see up into that uh, grain leg you can just see in the distance which is probably what I would say is the main farm of the three it would be set up for doing all the arable cropping and work. One thing I'm noticing just as we're heading up here is the nice wide shoulder on the road obviously if you're going to use any big equipment any big uh, air seeders or anything like that even some articulated tractors with uh, dual wheels or anything like that you're going to need all this space to be able to negotiate with the traffic and in fact I can imagine most people are probably going to turn the traffic off before even playing with it just for that pure reason. There's an isolated barn there I'm not sure if that serves any function or whether it is just decorative but again just taking a look across the map and across the fields. Hardly a flat area of land present at all it is all very sloped and uh, undulating and rolling hills. We head up this way, this takes us up between fields 16 and 6. And a couple of sheds there, a couple of small silos. Let's go and see if we can open this one. Doesn't appear to be any trick on that, we have bought all the land. So I'm assuming these are all just decorative. There's nothing there that indicates any of that is usable. So we've just got some decorative sheds there. We'll carry on up the road and go and have a look at the main farmyard up this way. Field access both ways. Just a little bit of a uh, road and track up that way to get into some of the fields further into the back of the map. As we carry on up here just a little bit, we do have another homestead there. It's quite a nice and immaculate looking homestead actually. If that one we can get inside, we're going to have a look at that in just a sec. But for now, let's go and have a look at a little bit more of this farmyard. The sign here. 
Camille Canuke, Camille's own sign there on that. Head on over this way, and uh, as we suspected and as we discussed before, we do have an option there for a grain drive by the looks of things. We've got the propane, propane tank, river bottom propane. So this is a very similar setup to uh, what FSG and I used on our Anna Indiana series. A little bit smaller, but much the same. I'm just going to have a look here. There you go, you can see that we do have the GSI silos, so we do have the option to dry corn and the storage there for most of our other crops. And I have just noticed that by buying the land has brought up those two fermenting silos. So I'm assuming when we get to look at the uh, animal farm a little bit further up the hill, there will be an option there to use some fermenting silos. We'll just jump back in here and drive around. We'll go down and have a look at these sheds and we'll uh, carry on up further up and look at the last of the uh, main farm yards. This is a pretty decent sized shed compared to where we were just looking at the other farmyard. Let's have a look and see what we can open. So there we go, we've got a door we can open there. Come on this side, we've got a workshop trigger. It's there, so you can uh, customise vehicles and things like that. Nice little mezzanine floor area up there. Farm sign, farm office. Be well, uh, be well set up farm actually. This one, very nice. On up the stairs, we're going to have a look at what's up there. Too wide. Can't quite fit. Too much to eat. Oh no, there we go. Slowly making it up. No, we're stuck. It's like we might be a little bit wide to make it up there. Unfortunate. Alright, get on back out this way. Can't have a look. Lots and lots of space in this one. And it finds the trigger over here for the door. Be clear, but there you go. Animated door opening up from there. And uh, more space again on this side with the two doors. So plenty of space, plenty of storage in here for your farm equipment, tractors, combines, trucks, all of that sort of thing. And lots of space around the yard, leaving equipment parked as well. Village equipment, whatever you might have. Or even space just looking here. You could probably level a little bit of terrain out, cut some of this out and put another shed up if you like. So lots of space around. Just leaving down the end there. Get on over this way, it looks like we've got a liquids tank. Is that for fertilizer? Three different options, herbicide, anhydrous or fertilizer storage in there. Another diesel storage tank. The tractor's running and then again some more of these uh, top or bottom commodity tanks. Fertilizer. Not sure whether we can put all the different crops in there, it does say fertilizer but I'd be hoping you can possibly store seed and lime in those as well. That is it, that is pretty much the main farmyard. We will go and stop in and have a look in the house very quickly and uh, then we'll head on further up the road and take a look at the animal farm. So taking a look here at the house, we just walked up to the door and uh, the garage opens which is good. Let's go and see what else we can get open in here. It's like an Elk Mountain farmhouse we go so if it's anything that's done by CJ guarantee it is going to be very well detailed lots and lots of features in here everything is openable and get in and walk around and see everything in here so uh, very nice laundry main living area very nice nicely detailed speak nothing less from uh, Elk Mountain Modding's work carry on up here bedroom or something in this one do we here we do indeed and there's this wardrobe sleep trigger Sleep trigger in the bedroom. Around down here, have a quick look in the different rooms, another bedroom. The bathroom, and this will be wardrobe trigger, won't it? It is. So you go customize your character there. If that's what you want to do. Very nice, right. Let's head on back down the stairs. Out the door. Take a look around, and uh, we'll be jumping back in the pickup and going down to that last farmyard. Carrying back on up the road here, you can already see those uh, fermenting silos there on the horizon. That is where we're heading to. Going past these fields, they are large, they are big fields. So you're going to need some big equipment. As much as it would be nice to use a fleet of the 6600 side hills, uh, I'd be keeping those in some of the smaller fields rather than bringing them up into any of these big ones. Unless you have the patience of a saint, and then I say go for it. Now, looks like we've missed the entrance here. We should have gone back in down the bottom there. Well, there might have been an entrance in here off the main road. So we'll uh, do another U-turn now that we've made it to the edge of the map. 
you don't bank down this way. I'm just going to pause here for a second because I was just looking. There's some of that custom traffic that uh, we mentioned earlier on. So I pick up there. That's something we've seen in too many other maps. You know, back down this way, big cow barn there on the right. It has a capacity for 800 head of cattle. So uh, you could really get into some pretty serious uh, animal husbandry if that's what you wanted to do. Drive in this way, take a look at what there is up here at this yard. Head on in here, we've got a big slurry tank there on the left. Another one of the uh, Quonset sheds. Like it could be a drive through one because it does seem like it does have a door on the other end. Uh, and taking a look here at the animal barn. So, open the door, main animal trigger there. There we go, that's where you buy your animals. We've already got some bought, just have a look. See those sitting down, there's one sitting down in there. Through the middle here. Looks like we've got a fill point there. I'm guessing with the milking uh, set up here with the Laylee robotic milkers, that would be your trigger there for buying your, uh, collecting your milk. So you have to drive through here with a truck or a tanker or something like that to collect all your milk. But this is a huge, huge cow shed, cow barn. Get on back over this way and this one opens there with the trigger. Takes you more into the animal area. Could be used for mucking out if you needed to. All of those look like they open. And then down this one, I'm going to assume might be your feed. See a trigger for feed, but uh you like it could be. Maybe around the outside. Let's go around the outside here. See anything down that side either. This may be the feed trigger here. Pretty more like it, looks like a dump trigger, so whether you just come in and dump it or uh, not, or whether that's actually the load trigger for the milk. Could be. The other the way around, could have been the feed in the middle. We look like we've got our bat room here for the milk, so more than likely, this is actually the area for the milk. Just checking, no triggers there with any of this equipment. It does look a little bit like Legacy Ag's work. He had in his cattle uh, his cow barn no trigger there on that one so looks like I'd say could be our fill point for our milk and it might have been our feed trigger through the middle looking at it again that is definitely a dump trigger rather than a load trigger so definitely definitely that way around but like I said nice big cow barn nice big space and uh 800 cow capacity, so certainly keep yourself busy. And as we discovered before, we do have these as uh, fermenting silos. You can see there we can make chaff silage, hay silage, and grass silage. Not a lot of space. We're using anything big. Dump points there. Not a lot of manoeuvring space or anything around here. Uh, but you can get around the back there into the blowers, which is where they dump. And then you've got the fill points here through the middle. Just wander around the other side here, another small shed and uh, another fuel point. So probably need some more storage, but other than that, that cow bun is uh, pretty impressive. So just taking a look here in the build menu, it does look like the silos, the shed and even the uh, milking parlour are all demolishable. The cow bun are all demolishable. So if you wanted to reuse this for something else, you've got to actually get rid of those. And then the uh, fermenting silos are placeable as a mod. So if you wanted to uh, redo the layout and customize it to your own requirements, give yourself some more room or uh, more space or even add another one in because you couldn't keep up with feeding 800 head of cattle, there is that option there as well. We'll take to the air for one last look here at the map from above, starting off up where we were at the animal farm at the cow barn, heading back here across the main farmyard with the uh, drying silo complex there and the big big workshop you really do get a sense of the size of these fields and the rolling nature of the terrain some pretty steep little hills and looking at it again I do wonder whether some of that precision farming data does follow the crests of the hills just a little bit which would be pretty clever if that is what Camille has done but uh, these fields you know this is one of the biggest ones we're just heading across now very, very sizable fields and uh, would take quite a while to get harvested. 
I like how there is quite a drop off as the river and heading over towards the town off the edge of the map, the edge of the uh, fields, there's quite a drop down there into the river which is quite cool. I can imagine naturally as the river has eroded and that over thousands and thousands of years it's actually what it is and as I said earlier it is based on a real BEM data so you do get this kind of elevation and undulation in the area. It's all in all quite an impressive little map. Bit of a departure for Camille doing just a standard 2x2 map uh, but it does just have his trademark style to it. This feels like a Camille map so looking forward to possibly having a little bit of a play on it. But I hope you found that map tour very very interesting and uh, might have piqued your interest in a map you weren't fully aware of. I'll leave a link to download it in the comments below. It's available through Camille's itch.io page so make sure you go and give it a shot, see what you think and uh, maybe give him some feedback if there is anything you pick up that could be fixed. Uh, he's always open to fixing bugs or anything like that. Like I said, doesn't seem to be a huge amount of uh, publicity about this map so it could be something to jump on and have a bit of fun with. So I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.